worse and better at the same time. What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel, Geared Inc, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And on my channel, it's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. Before we talk about today's video, remember there's only six days left to enter the giveaway for the $100 gift card of your choice if you win to Amazon or Newegg. I'm gonna be announcing the winner on Instagram and Twitter after the 20th, so the link to that video is down in the description, so make sure to enter it if you haven't already. So in terms of doing this video, all my testing methodology is going to be linked down below. But for you guys who don't know, we finally have a game that has both DLSS and ray tracing available in it with the new patch that is Battlefield 5. And for you guys who don't um, are familiar with what ray tracing or DLSS is, essentially ray tracing is a technology that's been around for a while, but it's finally coming to us from NVIDIA in the form of the new Turing GPUs, and it allows us to render basically shadows and light in real time realistically in a way that we simply haven't ever been able to do. Uh, DLSS actually replaces anti-aliasing and the point of anti-aliasing is it actually is to make your image look crisper, especially in things like little details, hard edges, things like that, but it does require quite a bit of GPU power. DLSS, on the other hand, uses AI to essentially infer high resolution images onto whatever you're looking at, which means that it doesn't have to take away from the GPU processing power in a significant way, increasing the overall performance. Both these technologies are specifically designed to increase, I would say, the 4K gaming experience, although they can be used with uh, lower resolutions. And so I was able to test kind of across the board. So without further ado, let me show you what I found. So the first thing we tested was 1080p gaming. Now, one of the things you need to know is that unless you're running this in native 4K on a native 4K monitor, you can't actually toggle DLSS. It has something to do with the ultra high definition settings or, their or I should say NVIDIA's definition of it. So if you run this at 1440p or at 1080p, you can't toggle it off. So at 1080p, what I found is that with DLSS turned on, there's definitely a performance increase, which is the whole point of the technology in the first place. Although, um, basically, uh, I had to go from ultra, which everything is set out, all the graphics, um, including ray tracing and going down to medium. Um, basically, ultra and high ray tracing, it didn't matter what re uh, resolution I did, had the exact same performance, and medium and low had the exact same performance. So it appears to be that the high medium changeover is where you're actually gonna see the performance increase. And so going through um, 1080p and then going into 1440p, um, you're seeing the same delta, about 15 to 20 FPS, depending on the ray tracing settings being either ultra high or medium and low. So basically, you're able to get kind of an idea of the impact on this. Now, when we're talking about testing this in 4K, I could not use OBS or GeForce um, Experience to record. Literally, I was getting um, just like 12 FPS. Basically, it, it was just too burdensome on either my CPU or GPU. So I had to record it with my camera. But what's fascinating is this is where we see the biggest difference. So with ray tracing on either ultra or again medium, because that's where you see the delta, um, definitely see a massive performance difference. But where it's really apparent is just with DLSS off. You can see how much of a massive hit to our FPS we take when this feature isn't enabled. So there's proof that this feature, our technology does exactly what it's supposed to do and essentially give us a much better gaming performance comparative to anti-aliasing or traditional rendering techniques. Now, here's the thing. DLSS has come under fire a lot for basically creating either artifacts or softening the image and not providing as crisp as basically anti-aliasing is able to do. And unfortunately, that's basically what I confirmed through my test. So here's an image of a 4K DLSS scene essentially from Battle Battlefield 5, and then here's it with uh, traditional anti-aliasing. Now, I'm gonna play these back and forth slowly so you guys can see the comparative difference. And then here they are side by side. So you'll notice that in things like leaves, branches, even um, edges around the water, the DLSS is definitely softening the image, um, I would say noticeably if you take a second to look, but here's the thing, Battlefield 5 is a FPS shooter, and typically you're going to be wanting higher FPS in, in these type of games. Now, if I was playing something like Skyrim, for example, I may throw up more of a fit about the fact that I'm actually losing a crisper image by using DLSS. Not the case in Battlefield because honestly, it's really hard to notice because so many things are happening at any given time. So I found my best gaming experience was basically to leave everything cranked up at ultra, run ray tracing at medium settings, which again, there's not a whole lot of difference visibly that you can see because there's just so much going on and DLSS on. This gave me consistent 60 plus FPS. Now, the reason I don't 
don't care about getting anything above 60 as far as I just don't want to fall below is because that is the um, hertz on this monitor. Meaning even if I got more frames, you're not going to see any of it. And that's something that's important to understand. Unless you have a high refresh monitor, 60 FPS is what most 4K monitors cap at. So you can see from these images uh, just how good of a gaming experience this was. I mean, 60 FPS, ultra settings, 4K, oh, you know, DLSS on with ray tracing. And it's, again, it's a pretty great gaming experience if you're not looking for, you know, 100 plus FPS or playing in, I would say, competitive mode. But this definitely allows you to take advantage of 4K gaming. I, I would say arguably in a way that just hasn't been able to be uh, done before, simply because 4K gaming is still so demanding. So there you have it, guys. That was essentially what I found through doing my own test of this software. I'd be interested to see some of your comparisons because I'm running on a Ryzen system. Um, Intel obviously runs a little bit faster when it comes to, um, you know, gaming in general although at higher resolutions your gpu bottlenecks so it's arguable if at anything above 1080p if there's really any significant difference but anyway if you enjoyed this video go ahead and leave me a big thumbs up if you didn't go ahead and leave me a thumbs down remember to get subscribed and hit that bell icon for new videos to drop i apologize because i've been sick i know that i haven't been able to upload lately but things are now finally normalizing so lots of videos are on the way as always thanks to my patreon and twitch subs Guys, my channel is not possible without your support, and we've been doing a lot of fun things. I'm actually rolling out these new rewards. Not only do I put your name at the end of my videos if you're a Patreon or Twitch sub, but we give rewards like wallpapers that I actually have artists commission and things like that. Fun, fun little things that I wanna do to show the community that supports me because I am completely self-funded. Now, if you're buying any of the hardware listed, you can actually use my Amazon affiliate link or my Newegg link to support me directly. Um, and all that money goes back in the channel. I don't take a dime of it. It's what makes things like this possible. And as always, guys, I'm going to continue to make these videos whether you watch them or not, but I hope you do, and I hope to see every single one of you next time here on Geared Inc. And so in Battlefield 5, bah, you know, having all the frames in the world doesn't matter if you can't shoot the enemy, so, you know, whatever. Got something in my teeth.